Our focus tonight is on error detection and correction. A lot of this is review for us, but uh, some of these details need to be touched upon uh, to make our players better and have a more successful hockey career. Um, with Within this presentation, I talk about stance, edge control, skating, stopping and starting, puck control, passing, shooting, checking, and even get into some puck retrieval. So we check a lot of boxes and uh, might as well jump right into it. When it comes to basic stance, obviously we want knees over toes, two hands on your stick and that back straight and head up. But some of the tendencies for the minor, the youth player is to have their top hand resting on the thigh or the hand. The head is the heaviest part of our body. And obviously if it's in front, we're probably gonna fall down. So we gotta keep that head under our shoulders, head under our hips, so to speak. Uh, some players aren't on the flats of their blades. They stand on those inside edges, whether it's more grip for them, I don't know, but we wanna get those, uh, those, those edges off the inside and uh, try and get them on more of a flat type of stance. So those are typically what we see. And then obviously, you know, not that this is perfect, but this is pretty good. Knees over toe, stick on the ice. Uh, and these are some pretty good ones too. Again, uh, there's not much you can do sometimes when they start leaning with their hands on their, on their hips, but those are pretty solid basic stance and just some reminders for us. If you can't get up from the ice, you can't really play the game. And, and we see a lot of players struggle with this and, there are a couple different ways you can do it, but when the head is down and you're not using your stick, it's really hard. The ice is slippery for these kids. So uh, it is, it, it is troublesome at times for them to get up. And there are some basics we could remind children about, uh, especially when it comes to utilizing some of the, the, the equipment that we have and, and slowly progressing, progressing one knee at a time. But uh, I think one of the keys is to really, engage with your arms and your stick so you can get into that push-up position one knee at a time and then you know use your stick as leverage to it, it it certainly will help balance and and again with a focus on the head as long as your head's not too far forward you should be able to get up um, quite easily whether you're stationary or moving so just a couple of reminders again about getting up from the ice when it comes to Inside edge work, I mean, it's a focus at, at this level. And one, one key focus would probably be the eyes. Obviously, we want our head up. That, that head and the vision seems to be a key uh, teach point for minor hockey. Whether somebody is standing at this pylon in front of us or off to the side, uh, it's, it's important that we continue to remind our players to get their eyes up. Another deficiency we see is the sticks in the air. Again, I don't want to say use it as a tripod, but if you get that stick on the ice, you're probably going to have better balance and you're going to be in a more ready position for uh, the puck to come to you, to you. We talked about stance earlier, but, you know, and, and especially for taller children, when you say get low, it's really hard for them to understand what it means to get low and bend their knees. But it's really hard to be mobile when you're when you're straight legged or standing up like a pencil. So just reminders, get that front knee over toe, keep your stick on the ice and 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 try and lead with your eyes uh, and, and especially get that that vision engaged. The other thing we see is, again, we're not on the flats of our edges uh, you can you can see there's a, a distinguished uh, focus on the inside edge here, and it just doesn't uh, allow for much glide, um, but maybe it helps him go faster. So just some things to remember with uh, regards to inside edge. Um, and again, Riley here giving us some good demos, um, good knee over toe. His eyes are up. His head is up. He's got one hand on a stick. His stick is on the ice, whether you have one or two not opposed to it. Here's a good clip of knee over toe, what we're looking for back straight. And again, you're leading with your head, your shoulders and your stick to follow. So again, we, we get a clip of a, a youth player. That's pretty good knee over toe. The eyes are up, which is great. He's got two hands on his stick. It's on the ice. So those are some things that we want to make sure that we focus on when we're talking about inside edge control and being mobile with, uh, with regards to skating. 
forward striding. We see a lot of this, you know, we, we say go fast and, and kids come out of the gate with their heads down and just going like a dog on a bone. So this is something, again, we talk about vision and the head being so heavy when it comes to minor hockey and skating that we want to make sure that 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 is up. We see the straight legged tendency a lot. They just start running off on the ice. There's no real stride. And the tendency when you start running is to, to create that high heel kick. So again, stride out, not, not back, definitely engage the hockey stance so you can, you know, create some sort of length in that stride and avoid the running or the heel kicks. Um, or, the, you know, again, that straight leg, it, it's tough to create any type of stride when you're standing up like that pencil I talked about earlier couple of things to think about. You can think about your arms, you know, obviously your arm swing kind of counter counter balances and gives you some torque, but we, we sometimes call it pulling the rope. Your, your arms should come to midline. Your head is up. You, you know, obviously you're striding out, not back. And the, the faster you can recover, the better off you're going to be. It's like a, each leg is racing one another. So just some simple things there. This, this boy's doing a pretty good job of his, uh, good arm swing, pretty good. Uh, he's a little wide tracking, but he's still, that's what you're probably going to see from the best uh, U7, U9 out there uh, with regards to skating. But when you talk about, you know, some of the erratic arm swing, swing, swing sorry, and the high leg kicks uh, and then standing too upright, you can definitely address those during uh, the weekend uh, showcases that you're you're at. Backwards, another important skating technique. Uh, a lot of it stems from balance and, and just having that head down. It's, that's not really a, a correct way you want to see them skating. Another tendency we see is the two hands on the stick. I guess I'd rather see them leaning with two hands on a stick than falling all over all the time. But we've got to get you know them to the one hand. And again, he's probably leaning over because his head's so far in front of him. Uh, and then you just can't can't stay balanced. So a couple key things there. Uh, the one, another, you know, maybe it doesn't affect so much now, but the hand in the air is a little bothersome. I mean, the game is played with a puck and if your hand is up by your chin following the one-on-one -on -one or whatever they're teaching uh, it's further away from your stick. And when the puck comes, you know, the game is about time and space. It's a long way to go from having your hand in the air to grabbing your stick to make that next play. So, we want to try and keep that uh, hand a little closer to the stick, not necessarily up in the middle of your chest or up by your chin, following that player moving from one side to the other in front of you. So a uh, couple teach tips. Uh, again, one hand on your stick is important. Uh, limit your crossovers. I, I mean, we're not opposed to them, but the fastest way to get back there is, is probably like this. Uh, keep that head up, your back straight, sit down and, uh, you know, I think you'll have you'll see see more success with 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 some of those teaching te techniques. When it comes to pivot uh, from forwards to backwards, uh, you know there's two real good ways to do it. You can go ho toes first or heels first, and you know it's it's okay early, but again, sometime we're going to have to teach the kids to separate their upper body and lower body. Obviously, if if this player is pivoting in a game. He's vulnerable to the left side when his bum's facing the wall. So you don't want to, you know, give up that side of the ice so easily. But again, uh, it's a really hard skill and technique to teach. And again, here's another clip where you just totally turn to one side of the ice and the turn is wide. Um, again, not bad with this one, but then the head's down again. And it, it hurts with regards to your balance and mobility. So. Uh, Try and keep your shoulders facing up ice. Um, you know, you're more mobile with one hand in your stick than you are with two, especially when you're transitioning from forward to backward skating. And then try and encourage them not to stop skating. Try and stay in motion because obviously you're you're transitioning to defend. Here's just a good heels first, knees are bent, eyes are up. Uh, and then we have a toes. And again, he could separate his upper body and lower body, but I think that was more on a surf. Uh, this is a pretty good technique here. One hand on a stick didn't get turned all the way around. And again, stays in motion, good separation, upper body and lower body, one cross out, one crossover out and, and gets back into defending mode. So 
some good reminders there when it comes to pivoting and from forwards to backwards skating. Starting and stopping again, it, it really stems from uh, you know the stance. Um, starting, we'll see a ton of players start like we did in that skating video with the head down, and it just doesn't uh, benefit anybody. You're probably going to run into something or bump into something. Arm swing is is somewhat of a, cur- a concern at a younger age. You, you want to get them, you know. It's not running. It's not north south, but it's definitely not east west. It's it's somewhat controlled, uh, coming to midline. It's not erratic, but you'll see more of it with two hands in the stick. Um, again, when when we're quick starting, we don't want to run on the ice. We want to grab the ice. Knee bend is important. Jumping out, not up is another tendency we see with regards to quick starts, but the short stride is, is something that, you know, maybe you can start with the first two, but you've started, you got to start elongating that as much as possible as you get into your stride reaching two hands in your stick is, is, is okay. But I think when we're, when we're going off the quick start, uh, we want to have two hands or a stick and that's such a narrow hand grip. We'll talk about that. Uh, when we get into puck handling hockey posture is 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 the foundation for everything um lean forward not jumping up get on the balls of your feet and then try and maximize that stride link as soon as possible but just stride out not up it's pretty good technique here keep your head up um engage your blades don't be jumping on them running on them um you know, and, and this is a pretty good technique here, just reaching and look at that stride length. That's a pretty good little clip for, and then good arm swing here um, with some examples of what it could look like at that U7, U9 level. Stopping again, we're seeing so much just too upright, can't de-weight, but if you don't have good knee bend, you're, you're, you're in trouble. We see people turn with one skate, not both skates. So you, you can see in, in that clip there, it's tough to get both underneath you. Uh, we see a lot of inside edge one feet, but I mean, it's, she's still stopping and getting it done. Uh, we see a lot of drag from behind. Like um, I'm not sure if it's just a, a, a understanding or a comfort, but y- you know, you're going to be a, you're going to be a sharper stopper when uh you're not dragging that one and you're engaging both your blades um so not not bad there and then a lot of it i mean obviously we we want to hold these kids accountable and and stopping is stopping and and at the minor hockey level we want to make sure they come to a complete stop you can control it with your whistle you can control it with your voice um use the obst- uh, obstacles like the lines on the ice but uh, to get a true feel of what it's like to stop and start, we we need to come to complete start or stop. So some good reminders there. Um, when it comes to, you know, teaching, uh, your hockey stance is important. Uh, you're, you're on inside and outside edges when you're stopping. So we can't forget about uh, our basic uh, striding, but being able to de-weight and sit down, would you be your key here? And using your knees as shocks, there's the two edges that are engaged and and kids won't understand that, but both edges are on the ice, one inside, one outside. Eyes up for basic balance is important. And uh, the de-weighting is is, is really probably the hardest thing. And I guess you could start with lifting the toes. That would be your first, I don't know if you can see it here, but get on your toes it's easier to turn and then sit down on your balls or your heels. So de-weighting, you're not jumping totally in the air, but you're getting up, you're lifting on your toes. That's a pretty good stop there uh, by that young gentleman. And and keeping your feet shoulder width apart during that stance will just give you more strength and power. Again, the eyes are down, not ideal. But uh, when you're looking at U7, U9, that's pretty solid there by that little girl. Um, but some good reminders again and, and some good visuals in, in case you're unaware of what this is going to look like at uh, a weekend event or a practice. 
crossing over on the circles. I mean, it's important lateral skating, pushing the dots at the next level. Everybody's crossing over. Straight line skating is kind of a thing of the past. Obviously, it's it's included in races and back checking, but the game is played going left to right in in multiple three strides here, three strides there. And when it comes to crossing over, uh, we see a lot of players that are just too upright and they can't get their knees over. Uh, we also see the turn is not there. So again, if you're going to turn with your uh, tight turn, you're going to lead with your head and your shoulders and your stick's going to follow. So we don't see enough of the uh, turn and looking at the dot. So if, if you're looking at the pylon in the middle, that would give you a great uh, visual and it would help the player turn and be able to cross over probably a little bit easier, but being too upright is, is something that needs to be addressed with the minor hockey players. It's that hockey stance. It's hard to stay low. Their strength is not there. And then the, just the rutting on the ice, there's just no grab, there's no turn. So those are kind of some of the things that you're going to see. And if, if all else fails, get them to, to, to just turn their head and, and we rotate from the top down. And if you can get them turning their head first, shoulders and stick and hips should follow after so again some good things here stay low you know he could probably do a better job of looking to the inside but his shoulders are open and turned his stick is to the inside that's a good visual there of of what we're looking for and again holding in that stance there's so many progressions that you can do that undercutting is a hard skill i i, I don't even know if you could master it at u7 u9 but it's certainly needed in order to cross over and create more speed when you're, you know, not just straight line skating. So great drills, just some tips when it comes to uh, helping the youngsters get around on those circles and uh, similar to the circle, the tight turn. Uh, I mean, there's, there's less stops and starts in the, in the game and more turns, Mohawk turns, jam turns. And some of the things that we see, Obviously, we're standing too upright, which doesn't allow us to get good knee bend and strength in the turn, which promotes just a wide turn. So you can see how wide I always use this saying we call them tight turns for a reason, guys, but they don't seem to understand that. Sometimes uh, we see a, a back toe drag uh, left behind us. So again, here's that too upright, uh, not really leading with his eyes, but on the other visual here, you can see. The toe is dragging behind. That's another thing. You want both edges on the ice. You want to be gliding. Sometimes you can create more speed by dropping that inside edge. Another common trait when it comes to uh, tight turning is you can see the players get on their heels. And, and I'm not sure if that's just for confidence, strength, but uh, they instead of gliding on the ice, now they're digging in. And it's probably just due to them trying to turn so sharp but we want them on the flats, not on the, on the inside edges, like those two clips there. Uh, and just some reminders, but um, easy to see, uh, hard to, easy to see on video, but really hard to detect when you're going full speed, but uh, maybe this will help. Uh, I had to really slow this clip down to get the gist of it. I'd probably, I mean, I like the hockey position. I like the knee bend. I'd probably get the head going around quicker. And the young player right here does a great job of looking to where he's going. So that's what you're trying to establish. He's got good shoulders or legs are under his shoulders. He's leading with his head. His stick is following. It's a little behind, but that's pretty darn good. And he's gliding through the turn. So some really good stuff there with the tight turns and, uh, and, and crossing over on the circles. Puck control. And again, this is a great girl. I, I staged this video. I got her to stay stiff, stay upright. She's still trying. You can tell her tongue's out. But the narrow hands is just not really what we're looking for. And, and it just doesn't allow for strength and power and next play passing. So obviously the head will, we want it up. And if if anything, during the puck handling, you got to, you could stand right in front of them, get the extra coaches running around, skating around holding digits in the air, get these players with their head up while they're stick handling stationary. So the narrow hands, the heads down, 
Okay, and the rolling of the wrists. Uh, again, when your knees are bent and your arms aren't as 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 or your hands aren't as narrow, you're going to get more roll in the wrists, and that's truly what stick handling and puck handling and making plays uh, is all about. Um, this guy does a pretty good job here. His eyes are up. He's rolling his wrists. He's got his hands pretty tight to his body, but again, he's moving that puck pretty good. Can he move it from front to side to backhand side? I think those are your progressions when you're going stationary. Um, but he's doing an exceptional job of trying to roll his wrist, staying in his hockey position, which is hard for the youth, and then separating, isolating his upper body and lower body to play outside his body. These are great puck handling skills uh, being executed by a U7, U9 player. Um, and I think this is what your expectation should be like with regards to stationary stick handling and, and, and cradling that puck, so to speak, as they're handling it. Passing and receiving sometimes real hard to, <laughs> real hard to deal with. Uh, we, it's, it's an, almost an attention thing. Uh, you know, they just stand up and then the puck's not there and then all of a sudden it's, a, it's there. Uh, so again, it comes back to hockey stance. Um, too upright, hands are too close, which means no power, and they do it when they receive it too, um, and and it, it 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 it's 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 hurtful. Um, obviously, we want to give them a target. We talk about it all the time. This is what happens: we get tired, we get bent over. Coach is yelling at me. Put the stick on the ice. Well, here, this is what I'm going to do. Um, get them in their hockey position. It's just going to strengthen their legs for skating. Uh, take a break, go down to one knee, whatever you got to do, but repeat, repeat, repeat. That's what you're looking for. But you can also see in that video right there, the blade is, is in a shovel position. So that would be a low, uh, low elbow, so to speak, make sure that blade is flat and you got as much tape on the ice as possible to help with, uh, controlling that pass. A couple of experts here, uh, good hockey positions, eyes are up, stick target presented, uh, even to handle it, like dust it once to, so that the player can understand what it's like to feel it with regards to puck control. And you'll probably have more success when, um, executing. I like the reception of this player in the red here, how he gets its target and he, he cushions it. He receives it. He's got soft hands. So again, you can see his hands are out from his body. That's a great, uh, execution of soft catch and, re uh, release of a pass. Backhand passing, nothing changes. Uh, it definitely needs to be addressed. The flat blade blade on the ice uh, that I talk about, the high elbow, that's what you're looking for. If you have a low elbow or a lazy hand, you're going to have a backhand shovel. We see a lot of shovels and pucks bouncing off, whether it's forehand or backhand at minor hockey. You can see the reception is in the middle to heel of the blade. Just gives you more power, more control. Most curves bend away from heel to toe. And if you're receiving backhand passes on the toe area, one, it's the weakest portion of our blade, wh whatever level you're at, but it also tends to, to fall off. So try and, uh, you know, get that hand eye coordination uh, in the middle or back. It's probably the strongest part and the safest place to try and receive backhand passes. And then you can obviously move on to touch passing, but I would, I would stick handle it, return it, um, again, these are stationary skills, uh, but very relevant and uh, good reminders to us with regards to stationary passing, forehand and backhand. When it comes to shooting, uh, head and eyes are downed. Hand on hip is a big one, especially in the female game. Not sure why, just for strength, I think. Hands are too close. A lot of flicking of the puck. So again, here we see the hand really close to the hip. They use it as leverage and, and they just kind of whip the, the whip, whip the stick. Uh, we also see puck placement, poor placement, because you want to get it in the air. So it's, it's always, it's always on the toe and they're flipping it. And it feels good to get it in the air, but I, I'd rather see a good, um, good, good heel to toe, old school wrist shot, or even a sweep pass is probably where the U uh, seven will start just kind of sweeping that puck. Uh, the U9s, you'll start seeing flipping, and, and obviously you're going to have more success because goalie probably can't catch at le that level. But we got to get the basics, uh, the fundamentals, the the legs incorporated, and then the hands too close together is just, just 
it's just weak and it's hard to generate any power in your stick with regards to pass reception, shooting, stick handling. Uh, so those will be some key areas of focus. And then again, puck too far out in front. We just try and flip, flip, flip. So I think those are some of the things you're going to see with regards to the forehand. Um, what I like about this little guy is, is I love the T push. Like I, I know it's, it's, the game is evolving, but this a of loading the puck in the heel and releasing it to target, we skip this stage so often at a youth level. And this is the foundation. And at U 15, it you're, I'm surprised it's how many guys can't shoot like this anymore, but this is the foundation. Engage your legs, get the puck on your stick near the heel, let it roll off and and get your head up to target follow through to target i think that's a really good youth wrist shot and he's obviously having some success with the mini net there ringing it off crossbars but that engagement of that back inside edge pushing to the target is something that certainly would be great to incorporate early so that when it comes to later on they will be easier adapting to the new uh snapshots and snapshots when it comes to the backhand, I think there's two ways uh, you can shoot a backhand. At the youth level, I'd be keeping the puck on the blade. But again, you can see the back edge activated. The opening of the hips is so important. Every shot comes into your body except for the slap shot. No different than the backhand. But the opening of the hips and the T push towards target is a great start for backhand. And the follow through is towards target, not erratic up into the air. And the only difference between this one and the other one is the separation between the puck and the blade. So it's like a wrist shot and a snap shot. You've got a backhand sweep and you've got a backhand chop, snap, whatever you want to call it. Crosby is really good at this one, but stay low in your stance. I think that's a good video of how, you know, you're, you're in your hockey stance, your legs are engaged, your, your hands are, you know, in tight and you're, you're generating as much power as you can through the target, just a different view. And again, the only thing I change with that, that's that one right there is I would, well, sorry, I would try and get her to open. I would try and get her to open. Oh my goodness. I try and get her to open that front foot in order to T push and get some movement towards the target. Can't forget about checking. I only got a couple more here, guys. Can't forget about checking and stick lifts again look at the narrow hands of the player in the visor you got to be strong if you're going to go steal pucks and it's really a trend in the game we very rarely start with the puck on our sticks we're teaching kids at a really young level to go and learn how to steal pucks and we do it with a stick lift knees bent hockey position will help with that strength but a combination of bad knee strength and bad hands doesn't allow for much success when you're trying to steal a puck. The other thing is get close. Don't be afraid to engage. Um, the game is a contact game, whatever level, non-contact, female, male, there is rubbing. And uh, the the closer you get to the opposition, the better chance you're going to have of stealing that puck. So, whoops. So again, get close, stay close, be strong. And, and, and this little guy does a great job. He's timing it perfectly. Hands are in a pretty good position, but he gets close. His knees are bent. He's doing a great job of stealing. And the, the girl here is doing a pretty good job too with her 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 arms being separated, like being strong in her sticks. Now she's in her hook position. Again, when you're tracking from behind, you can see you're kind of sneaking up, but good, good knee bend, good strong lift, getting close to the opposition before he steals the puck and takes a shot off the glass. Last one today, uh, loose puck retrievals. I think it's one of the things that we do the most in the game is retrieve pucks. And why wouldn't we start that at the U7, U, uh, U9 level? Um, when we go retrieve pucks, we got to get our eyes up. Obviously, we want a shoulder check, but uh, heaven forbid we're, we're mesmerized by the puck. We should get our eyes up so we can kind of find out what our next play is on, on, on this, uh, going to be. I feel a lot of players go in with one hand on their stick. And then when they get to the puck, it's, there's so much to do. They got to put two hands on their stick. They got to get the puck. They got to look around. And, uh, another deficiency when they go get pucks is sometimes they stop. Obviously we want to stay in motion. So here we just have, don't no shoulder check. And you can be talking about this stays in motion. Pretty good job there. 
but again, we don't want to stop. We, we, we want to stay in motion. And you see this a lot when they go retrieve pucks, pretty good shoulder check there. But again, when a player stops, then it allows for, you know, puck separation from the opposition. Good shoulder checks, one hand on the stick and really slowing down, coming out with one hand. You're not strong, but again, we want to encourage two hands so you can make that next pass or not have that puck stolen from you. So key teaching points, try and shoulder check, keep two hands on your stick. Don't stop when you get to the puck and, and avoid pressure, like skate away. So great shoulder check by this little guy, both ways. He stops, gets out of there. He has two hands on his stick, but I give him two out of three on that one. Again, good shoulder check, two hands on her stick. Does she stay in motion? <clears throat> not bad, but you can see when you try and put three things together, two out of three is not bad. Good shoulder checks. Good, it stays in motion, two hands. There's our, there's our, our good one and gives her a good backhand. Add pressure. See if they can do it under stress. No reason why you can't do this at the U7, U9. Allow for success. Have them chase them out. But you can see shoulder checks become irrelevant. And we start forgetting what we were talked about in, in our teach teach tips. So in a nutshell, you know, we, we hit a lot of things from stance, shooting, passing, puck control. I think a lot of basics that are good reminders to us and, um, uh, can help your players enjoy the game, playing it longer, and and in the end, make us better coaches and and better better people to the to the players as well.